What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to very quickly show you how to stitch a panoramic photo in Photoshop. So first I've got one, two, three, four, five photos here that I took of Stamford Bridge in London. It's a soccer stadium. And what I did was I just stood there and I sort of pivoted the top half of my body across in order to take a few photos. And as you can see, there is some overlap. So if you look here, you see the screen. If I go over to the next photo, it's on the right edge. And then I've got, you know, um, let's just say the Chelsea letters here. So as you go across, you'll see that I've got it centered now. And then as I go left, you'll start to see the Pride of London banner here. And then as I go further, it's now fully visible with the Nike check and everything else. So the main thing when you're taking these panoramic uh, photos to remember is to make sure that it's overlapping. Now, as I mentioned before, I didn't use a tripod. I did this by hand and I just pivoted, you know, my torso basically. I'm um, trying to keep as even of a rotation as possible when I was doing this, but it was still pretty rough. I mean, I took these photos pretty quick. Um, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it, except that I wanted the, uh, these sections to kind of overlap. And so this is very possible and very easy if your subjects are far away. And in this case, you know, I've got a bunch of seats, maybe some people, some banners, some small details in the distance. And then the second thing is, of course, it's got to be a high resolution photo. Um, if you're taking low resolution photos with not a lot of detail visible, um, Photoshop will have a harder time uh, stitching the photo together. And not only that, um, you'll actually see the seams between the photos. So we definitely don't want that. And so uh, this is the best way to do it. So high resolution and nice landscape photos with the subjects far away. So I'm going to go ahead and export these photos and then pop over to Photoshop. So now I'm over here in Photoshop and I'm going to go ahead and start by going to the file menu, automate, and then photo merge. Now in this section, uh, we're going to go ahead and keep this on auto. I think it's smart enough to figure out, you know, how to stitch the photos together. I'm going to go ahead and add my files in and then uh, make sure that I have vignette removal selected and then also geometric distortion correction also selected. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now this process takes a few minutes, so you might want to grab a drink or something. But um, for this video, I'll just go ahead and skip over the wait. So while we're waiting for this thing to happen, Guys, if you find my videos helpful, don't forget to subscribe, uh, ring the bell for notifications, and of course, don't forget that if you guys have any questions at all, please comment in the comment section below, and I'm more than happy to answer your question. There is no such thing as a dumb question, and I love teaching about this stuff. So if you have any questions, again, please leave a question in the comment section below, um, and don't forget to subscribe and smash that bell for notifications. Thanks, guys. Okay, there we go guys. So the image has been stitched together. And as you can see on this right side, there is um, layers that Photoshop has created with each of my photos. And so if I kind of hide them, you'll see where those seams are between the photos. It almost looks as if a caterpillar is like eating the photo away, but you'll see where those seams are. And as I add the photos, you'll see that they're virtually invisible. And so that's a pretty good panoramic that it's stitched together there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, merge these now because I it did what I wanted. So merge them together. Now, in some cases, if your photo starts to look really distorted and weird, um, you may want to mess with the settings a little bit and maybe uncheck the geometric distortion. Or instead of using the auto feature, you may want to use some of the other ones, depending on what type of uh, panoramic or what type of uh, stitching it's doing. So as you can see, this photo is a little bit slanted. So the first thing I want to do here uh, before I crop it is I'm just going to draw a horizontal line going across using the line tool and then um, just move that down a little bit and use this line to align my photo. So what I'm going to use is this this big bar here going across the top, this curved bar, and I'm going to make sure the edge, the left and right edge of it are lined up. So as you can see, this one's way lower. So I'm just going to bring that up and try to line the photo. So the, I'm going to click the photo here, the layer, and then I'm going to hit Command T. And what that does is enables the rotation. Now in the newest version of Photoshop, if you have this show transform controls there, um, just enable that and you don't even have to hit Command T. You can just grab the corner. As you can see, it's got the little rotating arrow and just start rotating it. 
and it looks like we're pretty even but I'm just gonna make sure here and yeah I mean it's reasonably straight now so I'll go ahead and hit enter it completes that transformation and then now we're ready to crop the photo so using the crop tool I'm gonna go grab the top edge bring that down make sure we hide all of this transparent stuff and then grab the bottom edge hide the bottom transparent stuff and then of course hide the left and right edge all the transparent stuff on those sides and then what I want to do is make sure the photo is somewhat centered and you know what it kind of already looks like it is um, I might bring this in just a little bit on this side maybe not um, I'm still getting some of the transparent stuff here so now the photo is centered just hit enter and it's done so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and then export the photo now I've brought the uh, photo into Lightroom in order to do the last edits on it this is you want to process the photo after you've done the stitching because if you've done any kind of color modifications to the individual photos and then you try to take it into photo merge um, sometimes you know if you lose a detail here and there in the photo uh, Photoshop is gonna have a harder time trying to stitch that image and you won't get even colors going across so you want to make sure that you do that first um, stitch the photo first and then do all your photo edits so now we're just gonna do some of the quick edits that I've done previously now ideally I want to do this in raw format but just to kind of make the video go a little quicker I did the edits um, on JPEG files uh, just to make the photo merge go a little faster because obviously um, the photo uh, the raw photo files that come off my Nikon, the N NEF files, are way, way, way larger and would eat up a lot of RAM and it would just take much more time to process. And I've done far bigger uh, panoramas, so I know Photoshop can handle it, but I would have been sitting here waiting, you know, for a while uh, for that to, to finish, so I chose to do it this way. Okay, so I've got sort of the edits done. Um, obviously, like I said, JPEG isn't always the ideal format to be doing these edits in, but because the photos are so huge, or this photo merge is so huge, um, I'm not losing a lot. Uh, it's a very high resolution image, but just to kind of show you uh, what that looked like, here's the before, and here is the after. And guys, once again, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, Ring the bell to receive notifications, and if you have any questions at all, please use the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you guys.